Hello guys, time for another demo project in Laravel and sometimes I like to go on Upwork for some ideas and this is one of them. Simple website which I wouldn't pitch for, it's like a ridiculous price of $200. But anyway, it's pretty simple that we could recreate that with some showing of Laravel and some quick admin panel and how to think about the projects. A little dive into the future guys, so this is the final page how it will look like. So Sport Events homepage with search by Sport Region on Charity. And if you click on some event, it shows more details with tagging by Charity, by Region and uh, Manage. We'll get to Quick Admin Panel generated panel where you can manage all of that as administrator or if you're a company, you will be managing only your events. Now let's get back to the actual job. So in this video, there will be like a few steps. First step will be how to transform this into some kind of structure. So where to start? And I will start with database structure. So it would be much clearer what are we creating. So first we will think about the database structure from that. And then we will use quick admin panel to actually create that database structure and managing of blog and events and user permissions and all of that. Uh, and you can do that without quick admin panel. So don't get me wrong. Uh, you don't have to depend on quick admin panel. It's just a quicker way to do that. Uh, and the code of that website will be available for free on GitHub and you don't need quick admin panel for that because I was getting questions in the comments. So do I need quick admin panel for your demo projects? No, it's just a way to generate the same code faster. So we will do that. And then we will create a front end. So front end based on class max free bootstrap theme. We will create search of events, uh, blog articles, and just to rename those categories into sports, for example, and list the events. So three parts of the video database, admin panel and front end. Let's go. So first thing I think every time I start a new project, how to structure all of that description. Usually it's much longer and that's why I took a little bit shorter project to fit in a simple video. So I do the database structure and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be with some database tool or mockup or anything. This is how I do it with pen and paper. So I just take a notebook and try to write down the relationships, the fields, the database tables. And this is how it looks. So if you look at the description, there are events at the core of the system, but those events are tied into tags. And sometimes clients don't really uh, refer to some things in a correct way, in a correct structure. So they are seeing that all as tags, but in reality, it's not real, it's not a tag. So date is not a tag. Date will be start time and end time for the event. Uh, then companies, if they are registering for their account, they will be users of the system. So event will be attached to user ID here in company ID. And then at some point I realized that users will be the table for the companies. So we don't need a separate companies table. And then step by step you create this structure, which then allows you to think about the functionality. So what functions you need. You need to manage sports, regions and charities, right, in admin panel by administrator. Then you need to manage the events by companies and the core of that should be users and role systems who access what. And then posts, blog posts are kind of a separate thing uh, available only for blog uh, editing users. So from this, we can go to our admin panel tool, quick admin panel or core Laravel if you prefer to do that manually and generate admin panel to manage this one. And we will do exactly that. In our quick admin panel, we create a panel called events with my favorite theme core UI. And by default, it has user management and permissions. And by default, it has two roles, admin and user. But then after download, we would need to customize that and add a third role, blog, uh, blog writer, blog publisher. And first, we need to create those tags classifiers. So sports, regions and charities, sports. All of them will be just with one field, sports name, text, and required. We save, save the CRUD, and it will generate a menu item to manage the sports. Now, next menu item is regions, same thing, one field, name, required. Okay, save that, save the CRUD. And third thing is charities. So every event could be attached to charities. Charity. 
also charity name required save and save the CRUD. Next we need to install two modules. First module is for registration so this module so people would be able to register not only login and you can tick some check boxes but I won't do that in our case. So registration and then multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy will allow every event to be attached to a company. It could be user multi-tenancy or in more complex scenario team multi-tenancy but in our case it's user and we will attach that multi-tenancy to the events. So now if we create events, we create CRUD menu items, events, system is offering me fields from another CRUD in the past but I don't need that. We need to have more options of use multi-tenancy so attach every event to a user and next we have fields so event name required <coughs> Then text area event description, that may be optional. Then start time and end time, it will be daytime pickers, so start time. Start time is required, end time probably isn't required. Because not always you know the end time of the event. So end time, optional. And then those three uh, classifiers, so tags. And for that we have belongs to relationship, so belongs to sport. And we choose the model of sports. And that's it, that underscore ID and the field will be created automatically. Then we have region, again belongs to relationship, region, model regions, and same thing with charities. So every event could belong to one sport, one region and one charity. Charity, model charities, save. And that's it. And finally, we will create another CRUD menu item called posts. So for blog posts, posts. And we can, by the way, create uh, menu items. Doesn't matter if it's uh, being generated, the code in the background, we still can continue. So for posts, we would have title. Post title is required. Then full text of the post. So text area, full text also required and we use CK editor for that because as a blog post it should be uh, with formatting uh, and let's attach that to sport ID as well belongs to relationship to sport or also it could be attached to a particular event right so it belongs to relationship to the event event model events save and let's make a checkbox published or not so checkbox published default value unchecked save save crud and there's one thing I forgot to generate is the photos for events and for posts because they will be visible on the home page so for the event let's add if we go to edit crud we add a new field I type photo and add a photo it will be optional we save that save the crud and same for posts. So posts could also have a photo field like this. We save the CRUD too. Now we are ready. We can download the code. The admin panel is ready, the core of that, and we can customize the panel in the Laravel code after download and then move on to create the front page to actually view all the data. And here we go, downloaded admin panel. This part of the video I'm shooting almost a week later. So I've downloaded the panel and then asked my colleague Marius to create all the other things and I will comment them one by one. So by default, if you download that admin panel code, we had just created a new login as admin. You can manage all the things that we mentioned. So sports, regions, charities, events, uh, and users. So for example, you may add an event with a lot of fields like sports, region, charity, photo and all of that. And now let's tweak the back end a little and later we will add a front end. And I will jump in source tree. This is the software that I use for git management, for source control, so it's source tree on my Mac. And I will jump commit by commit and explain what has been going on here. So next we add a blog writer role because by default in users roles we have only two roles admin and user by quick admin panel and we need to rename the user to company 
that may register their event and also we need to add a third role blog writer and assign the permissions. So this is done in two files. We have roles table seeder. By default it has one and two IDs, admin and user, and we rename the two to company and add the three to blog writer. That is easy, right? And then we have permission role table seeder which is a bit more complicated. So in the database, we have a database table of permissions and then a pivot table with many-to-many -many relationship permission role. And this is filled by a file called permission role table seeder. It gets all the permissions, then assigns all of them to the admin, role ID one, and then assigns all of them to users, except permission with user prefix and with role prefix and permission prefix. Basically simple users cannot edit anything about users. So in the new commit, if we check out that one, that file changes. So simple users renamed to companies have permissions to only the event management and blog writer permissions is only post management. Let's reseed the database. So command migrate fresh seed and let's try to register as a user, as a company. So register, I will use form filler Chrome extension to register and automatically I'm assigned company role and I access only the events so I can add my own events. But if I would log in as administrator, I would see all of that menu items on the left. Next thing is little tidying up uh, dashboard. So by default, Quick Admin Panel generates this thing dashboard, which is empty with the thought that uh, users would fill it in with whatever they want. But in our case, we decided to remove that and redirect specifically to the events for companies and to blog page for writer. So this is a commit. First, helping functions for user model. Is, is a user a company or is it a blog writer? And we use those functions in the routes. So where to redirect user after successful login. And then we remove everything related to dashboard, which is home controller, blade, and the menu item. Next is a bit more interesting. Remember in the job description, in the original job, there was this line, optimized for SEO. And one of the biggest things about SEO is to have the URL structure mentioning the keywords. That part of the URL is usually called slug. Slug related to a certain post or record or company or something like that. And in our case, there are two public pages that will be sluggable. It's a page of event and page of a post. So to both of those, we need to add sluggable behavior. And for that, we added a package, eloquent sluggable, then configured its magic in every model. So event and post like this. Also, we need to add it check slug in controllers for event and post. For the validation form request is being reformatted a bit and then we added this. So slug is unique for events and also it should be alpha dash. So only alphabetical characters and dashes and similar to other form request validation files. Next, of course, we had to add the actual field of slug, which is unique on the database level too. And in this case, we're doing that in the same old migrations with the thought that we will re-see the database after the whole project is done. So new fields, then some languages, adding slugs, and then the most interesting probably part, the front end. In the create form for events and posts, we add another field slug, which is automatically filled in with this jQuery code. So on the change of name, there will be API call for checking slug and returning the potential slug. And also we show the slug on index blades. So nothing really fancy here. And finally add those URL for the API call to check slugs. Pretty long commit, right? And let's test it out. Check out that. Commit, we see the database because now it contains slugs and probably we will need to re-log in because there is no user anymore, yep. So we register again as a new company, form filler, register, and let's add an event. See, by the way, dashboard is missing menu item, so we clean it up. Add an event, so if I add a name, for example, best event ever, at the bottom we have best event ever as a slug. So this is the result of all of that commit. And now we finally get to the front end area and to the home page. We will use a theme called Classimax, as I've mentioned. So one commit is compiling all the assets from that theme. So that is pretty boring, CSS and images. But this is where it gets interesting. Let's check that out, home page. The biggest change probably in the routes. So home page doesn't redirect to login automatically anymore as admin panel because it contains front end routes now. And let's refresh our home page. So log out, 
and this is our home page now. Behind the scenes I've seeded some data, so seeded five popular sports, five regions of US and five random charities. So for now there are no events and no posts and we will add it now, but the home page is working. So let's register as a new user, new company, and let's add our event. So add an event with form filler I will fill something in. Start time, not really convenient, but let's put it this way, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sport is baseball, region is Houston, charities feed the children. Photo will be missing for now, we will get to that in a second. And let's save. Okay, so we added an event and now let's take a look how it looks on the home page. In other tab, I will load the home page. And look at here, we have an event of baseball. And if you see at the bottom, the URL is with slug. Now how it works, let's take a look at the code. We have a home page controller, which gets all the sports regions and charities for these dropdowns for the search. Then it gets all the three latest blog posts and all the sports with events for this table. So every sport will contain five upcoming events. And that's it. In the home blade, we have a layout of the whole theme. And then in the content section, we just list the HTML in a blade with some variables. So popular sports, then that search form using search regions, and then section for the sports and for the blog posts. And this is the layout front, which is almost copy paste from the original Classimax theme, just changing their asset to the actual Laravel way of loading the assets. And for now, all the other blades are empty. So post blade, events blade, and event blade, they are empty. And we will get to them in the next commit. But there was some preparation, so show the post and show for the events. And of course, we had to add the has many relationship here. Now, if we check out the next commit, it actually puts on the logic of events search. And we are using eloquent query when structure. So when some search query is present, then we filter the results by that. Homepage then is filled with popular sports and all sports. Interesting part here is with count eloquent method. So if you have has many relationship, then you can count the amount of child records with this. Also, we moved the global search dropdowns to a so-called composer, view composer. So you can create a class with filling any global variables, like in our case, these three. And you can bind that composer to any pages you want. In App Service Provider, you just list the pages and specify the class. And then we fill in all the detailed pages. And here's how it works now. We reload the home page. Let's search for baseball events. Search now. And we add the baseball event. For now without image. I will get to that in a second. And there is also an event page with tags of charity, region, and sports. So if you click that, this page lists all the events for that particular region. Now, final commit is about media conversions with Spati Media Library that we're using for the photo upload. It will automatically create two sizes of photos. And to do that, you need just to fill in register media conversions method in your model and specify the name for the conversions and the sizes. And then whenever you need those images, you will just load them like this. First, you check if there is an image, then you load the source. Similar here in the list or on the homepage. So I've checked out the last commit and let's test it out. Let's add another event with dummy data, also baseball, but now let's add an image. So for example, this image is being uploaded, save. And by the way, behind the scenes, I've run a command called storage link, artisan storage link to link the folder public to storage app public. And now let's take a look at the homepage. So we have our two events and let's click the last one. And there we go. We have an image resized as it should have been. So this is the result of pretty much everything that was listed in this original Upwork job. The code will be available on GitHub as usual. So click around, see how it works, customize if you want. And when you're going to create your next project, please consider using our quick admin panel to start quicker as you saw in the beginning of this video. In the future, I'll be back with more demo projects like this one from Upwork because I want to shoot more about real life scenario, not just hypothetical hello world or something. So if you have any more ideas for demo projects, 
comment below or use my email. But please send more detailed specification like this one at least. Don't just message me with like create a CRM because CRMs may be really different. And if you want to be the first to see those videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to be notified of new videos and see you guys in other videos.